movieweb.com. Well, I guess I'll start off by saying my girlfriend's from Texas. Uh oh, so she knew all about this. Yeah, I was gonna say this is like a little piece of folklore there <laughs> now. I mean her mom was the one who was like, Oh yeah, I remember when that happened. So I guess my obvious first question is why did you decide to change the locale of the story? Well, it was actually not my decision to change it. It was the um, production company got a good deal to shoot it in St. John, New Brunswick. I, I was kind of thrown by the whole thing because I had been imagining it was taking place in Texas. And uh, you know, when, my, and when we wrote the script, I thought we would shoot it in Texas or you know, some southwestern state or you know. And when they said St. John, New Brunswick, it was like what? You know, that doesn't compute. Um, and it was really it was a question because you know the company, the, the, the main financier was Canadian, and he had a worked there was a tax deal there, and that's why we went to St. John, um, which is the way a lot of movies get made these days. I was going to say the coldness of it and kind of the atmosphere really plays to the story, though. Do you think if you had done it like in a hotter element, you could have used those elements? Or do you think it, you like having it? Well, I, I like it the way it is. You know, I think you're right that, it, that that starkness really worked for us. You know, we shot it in November. It was, the trees were bare. The skies were gray. People's breath is fogging. You know, there's, a, there's something about that that's really cold and, and very, uh, you know, just added something to the story, you know. Um, but I think, you know, if we shot it and we originally wanted to do it, like in Texas, it would have been like, you know, no country for old men. You know, we would have had it, and, you know, dusty and, you know, uh, uh, kind of, you know, there's a different kind of Texas darkness, you know. Well, Stephen Ray spent way more time in the windshield than the actual guy did. He did, weeks, yeah. Now, how did he do with that? I mean, he, uh, he got kind of crazy, you know. I mean, it's... It's not easy, you know, because he's literally hanging upside down. You know, he's uh, uh, the blood would rush to his head. It was <laughs> it was not not easy for him. Well, did you guys ever leave him in there when you were like doing the reversals, or like did you guys all go to lunch and leave him in there one day? Well, there was no, we never did that. But uh, <laughs> you know, I threatened it a few times. You know, um, no, he was great. He he was, um, but he did. You know, it was not you know, for, because the other thing was that before we put him in the windshield, he'd have to go through three hours of makeup. So the combination of the two was like just too much. Endurance test for him, I guess. It was, yeah. But he would always say, well, I know my lines. Help me, help me, help me. <laughs> <laughs> but you kind of kept his character pretty close to the actual guy, didn't you? With like his, He had a family and kids and all that? Well, it was, it was interesting. We didn't really, you know, we kind of made up, you know, for the script. Um, I don't know if we ever knew that he had a, a, a son or not. But um, when the film was shown recently at the um, AFI in Dallas, uh, Stephen Ray was there, and um, this guy came up to him carrying a little baby, and it turned out it was Gregory Biggs' son, and uh, he would come to the screening. So he did get to meet the, the son. What's interesting, did you talk to him after the screening? I wasn't there. I was oh. not able to go. Um, unfortunately, we don't.